Hi everyone, it's Liz and Doyle back with you for Art in Isolation, sponsored by the Hoboken Library. Uh, today we are going to talk about another Asian artist. His name is Rob, spelled R-O-B-B-B-B. -B -B -B. That's four B's. I'm not sure what his name signifies. It is not his birth name, but that is his name. I really encourage you to Google Rob and see the kind of artwork that he does because it's truly amazing. We're going to look at some of his work. I'm going to talk a little bit about who he is. And then I'm going to show you the project that we're going to work on today, which is collage. Rob uh, comes from China. He was born in Beijing in 1990. He graduate, graduated with a bachelor's degree from the Department of Stage Design at the Central Academy of Drama. He is now living and working in Beijing. Rob is an iconic figure in China's contemporary street art scene. He makes these really ironic and fun, although sometimes black humor, and um, social commentary images of ordinary everyday Chinese people that he sees in the street. He then photographs them, he prints them, he draws and paints on top of the photographs, he cuts them out, and then he glues them to the sides of buildings. Beijing is like any major metropolitan city filled with crumbling old buildings. And Rob likes to juxtapose his newer images of art with these falling down, decaying buildings. It's part of his social commentary about China's move towards a more modern 21st century culture, but a culture that is still gripped by its past history, traditions, and historical perspective. He reminds us that the acquiring, the inquiring of awkwardness and hostility is ubiquitous again in China. People feel in multiple different ways and he tries to attach great importance to his images to value this kind of dichotomy in people's lifestyles, philosophy of life, and even the dichotomy between the old and new architecture in China. All right, now we're going to look at some of his work. Here's a image of one of Rob's pieces. You can see that he's chosen a very derelict area, Beijing, and this is a portrait that uh, he has literally glued to the side of this old building. So you can see the contrast between old and new, his use of photography, as well as, as his love for the decaying architecture of Beijing. I really find it to be such a great juxtaposition, the bright colors in the portrait, the funny expression on the, the man's face, the huge size of the portrait in relation to the architecture around it. It really shows that Rob has an incredible sense, almost a genius for space, size, and the relationship of one image to another. So again, he, he's expressing um, his thoughts and ideas about everyday people in Beijing. He wants to give them a certain amount of prominence and he wants people's images, people's faces to be noticed and recognized as being unique and interesting. Here's another one of Rob's really amusing portraits. Look at the expression on this young man's face. It really is saying a lot about the character of this person. I also love the realistic image of the face. 
next to the incredible texture of the old bricks and uh, the crumbling facade of this building, I just think it's such a unique and beautiful uh, expression of the artist's whole philosophy of life. Try and imagine walking through the streets of Beijing where people are rushing and hurrying and not really noticing what's in front of them and suddenly coming upon an image like this. It's got to bring joy and interest and curiosity and spark people's imaginations. And I think that that's what Rob is really all about. So his work has inspired me to lead you through a lesson in how to do collage. And our next step is to go to the easel where I'm going to give you some pointers and tips in how to do that. So now we're going to move on to working with collage. Uh, another artist that I'd like to recommend for you to look at, who was a phenomenal collage artist, is the famous African-American Romare Bearden. He's another great person to Google and look at his works. He was a master of cutting and gluing. And that, in fact, is exactly what collage is all about. It's a French word that basically means cutting and pasting. It's one of the most difficult things that I ever teach. Those of you who are my veteran students have heard me say that before, but collage is a difficult thing to understand because all of the basic elements of art are incorporated in collage. It's about shape, line, texture, dark and light value, color all the major components of art. So it takes really planning ahead and thinking through what it is you're trying to create because you have so many parts of the piece, so many parts of the whole that you need to bring together in order for the collage to work. My recommendation when you're working on collage is to first of all think of a theme an overarching idea that you can use in order to incorporate all those elements of art into one piece. So tonight, for my example piece, for my sample piece, my theme is going to be faces. I'm being inspired by Rob. Uh, the faces that he pastes all over Beijing to me are incredibly amusing and great to look at. So for my collage work, Today, I'm going to keep that in mind and use faces as my theme. Another way you can organize your collage work is to start thinking about what colors you want to use. If you stay within a certain color range or palette, you can bring the entire image together because it will be organized underneath this color um, scheme. All right, here we go. I'm going to start with a few oval shapes because the human face is basically one big oval. Wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. I'm going to do more than one oval because I want to experiment with different um, images and shapes and lines within the oval itself. So the oval is literally my frame for my face collage, and I'm going to do a few. Notice the way I organize the space on the paper. It is off-center, it's asymmetrical, which is so much more fun than putting everything right in the middle of the picture. It makes for a much more exciting and dynamic composition. I'm going to work in black and white and gray imagery tonight because I think if I keep my color palette pretty um, monochromatic, it's going to make it easier for you to understand what I'm trying to create.
So I have my starting point, the oval for the faces that I'm going to work on. I've chosen my color palette, which will be predominantly grays. I really love using grays and different tones of black. You will need a fairly good sharp pair of scissors. Make sure they fit comfortably on your hand because with collage you're going to be doing a lot of cutting. You don't want a, a tool that's uncomfortable to use. When I do paper collage, I am happy using just normal Elmer's glue in a stick, just the way an elementary school child would. There are all different kinds of adhesives, liquid, um, paste. I invite you to look them up. There's another glue called Mod Podge that is a fairly thick white glue that you can use for collage. And Mod Podge, you can also brush the glue over the top of what you're trying to glue down. With a glue stick, you want to put the glue on the back of the image. Now, because Rob, our Chinese artist, was my inspiration for the collage that I'm going to create, I want to keep it in a humorous vein because so much of his imagery is fun. Now, one thing with collage, remember I said it involves all the major elements of art, line, shape, color, texture, form, and now size. You can do all kinds of fun things with size in your collage work. So for example, I just cut out and glued down an eye. The eye is way too small for the oval that I created for this face. It doesn't matter because we're trying to create with collage a very surreal, almost dreamlike, humorous image. I like to look at different pictures. There's nothing wrong with using parts of the face from different people. You probably want to have a large pile of pictures at your disposal ready to use. I like to take fashion magazines and catalogs and just tear pages out and keep a collection that I can use. And the other thing that ordinarily I would do if I was working on a flat surface and not on the easel, I would not glue my shapes down immediately. And I recommend that you don't either. The best technique with collage is to glue, is to cut out lots of different shapes. And before you glue them, Move them around on the paper to see where they look best and how they work with each other. And that is your biggest challenge in collage, finding shapes that work together color-wise, texture, form, shape, relative size. How do they work together? Do they work well together to create the larger whole image. But because I'm not working flat on the table, I'm just going to go ahead and be daring and bold and glue down as I go. One thing about glue stick, uh, you do have to use quite a bit and you want to wait till you're absolutely certain where things are going to go because you need to glue down quickly. Again, I'm sticking with this palette range, limited palette range. It's going to help me organize all these different shapes and textures into the larger image of the picture. And 
the other thing with collage is you can use things that really don't belong in a certain part of an image. You can use shapes and things that don't fit with your theme, but that make sense either color-wise, shape, or line. So, for example, I could even put cut out pieces of food or trucks or cars. As absurd as that sounds, if it helps create the larger whole, then your collage will work. So I hope you're starting to see that this is a really nonsensical portrait that I'm creating. The parts of the face are coming from different people. Now, you don't have to use a monochromatic palette. I think if it's the first collage you've ever created, though, you might want to limit the amount of color you use. A fun thing to do, too, is keep it fairly monochromatic, and then at the end, you can start playing around with just a tiny bit of color that you cut. Now, I'm actually cutting part of this person's hat, not because I want to use a hat, but because this color black might fit within my collage. So it has nothing to do with the fact that this shape came from the brim of her hat. It has everything to do with the fact that I wanted a piece of black. Notice how I'm trying to make my shapes touch and relate to each other. That's another secret with collage. You don't want to leave a whole lot of the white background showing. That really will detract from the larger finished piece. I quite like the black, so I think now I'm going to work with some of the shape in her dress. And now, not because it's a dress, but just because I think the black is going to work well in my collage. That's why collage has the surreal quality that it does. You can use images that wouldn't make any sense in real life, but they make a lot of sense in the overall picture, whether it's because of the color, the shape, the texture, or the size of what you cut out. So you're trying to bring all these disparate pieces together to make one whole finished piece. One thing I love about collage, if you're using glue stick, it's relatively mess-free, so it's a great thing to do when you're quarantined at home. Your cleanup should be relatively easy if the only space you have to work is a communal section of your house and you can't leave things out. Collage is just very, very non-messy. So it's a good thing to do when stuck at home.
also tear your paper. It's a lot faster and sometimes the texture that you have with the jaggedy edge is quite wonderful. And you can always glue shapes on top of the ones you've already glued down. Nothing wrong with that. Art is always about change, things evolve. Keep working until you're satisfied with what you've created. some of that. Let's see how that works. Yeah, better. Now I'm working way more quickly than I might ordinarily do because of the constraints of time with this video. Take your time when you do collage. Again, as I suggested earlier, don't glue down until you've played around with all the different things that you've cut out. Really make sure you like where it goes before you glue it down. It will make life a whole lot easier for you in this process. And things in collage don't have to make sense. You can see already there, this face has three eyes. And it's about to have two mouths. So collage is more about how things look, not necessarily whether or not they make sense. I'm going to glue a few more pieces down, and then I think we'll call it a day with this collage work. As always, it's important to me that you get to work. This is for you for your pleasure during your time of isolation. Ordinarily, I wouldn't like this piece of white here, but I think it's quite interesting um, because it echoes, it mirrors the shape, the curves here in these two pieces. I may leave it blank. I may come back to it later. And glue something in that space. It's all good. Keep remembering the theme that you've chosen whatever it may be, let that be your guiding, organizing principle. Because when you're using so many different things, it becomes difficult, as I said in the beginning, it becomes very difficult to tie it all together into a finished piece. All right, one more piece. texture in that one. At this point, this piece isn't ready for that much texture. Maybe later when I come back to it. Alright, so my oval is almost filled in. There's a lot more that I want to do with this. Probably several more layers of different shapes and shades of gray and black. But I think from what I've accomplished so far, you can get a feel for what collage is like. Now, Rob, who is the artist we looked at today, R-O-B-B-B-B, four Bs, was also inspired by some other artists that I think would be helpful for you to look at. One is Banksy. Banksy is Quite a notorious street artist, British street artist. You want to look at his work. 
for ideas and inspiration as well as Rob's and also one of my personal favorite artists who was a big inspiration for Rob, Jean-Michel Basquiat, African-American artist who did a lot of graffiti work in his early career, his very short career. All right, thank you everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed this session on collage and the Chinese artist Rob. Do go again to his website. I recommend it highly. I think you're going to find it a lot of fun with beautiful pieces to look at. One last big thank you to the Hoboken Public Library. You can see all of the videos that we've created, uh, Art in Isolation Lessons, on hobokenlibrary.org. Do visit, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Art has a great way to keep your mind occupied during this time of anxiety and quarantine. So enjoy your week. Next week we will look at another Asian or Asian American artist whom I hope you will enjoy. All right, keep making art. Bye-bye.